Hey there, Earthlets! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Now, it's been a while since we last checked in with the workings of the Men in Black. Let's remedy that with today's subject, Men in Black International. Released in 2019, Men in Black International shifts away from the adventures of Agents J and K to an entirely new pair. Agents H and M are tasked with seeking out a mole at MID London, with predictable chaos ensuing along the way. Sadly, the critics were not kind, and Rotten Tomatoes only gave it 23%. But I've said it before, and I'll say it again, Rotten Tomatoes is not the boss of me. So it's time once again to enter the weird and wonderful universe of extraterrestrial affairs on Earth in... Men in Black International. It's 1996, and young Molly has a nocturnal visitor. While the MIB are busy with her parents, she helps this Tarantian escape, an act of kindness that will not be forgotten. And this sparks an obsession which lasts to the present day, and leads to a familiar doorway in New Jersey. Which goes about as well as you'd expect, until she gets the nod from Director O. And Initiate M's first mission is in London, where we meet H. That saved the world with his wits and deatomizer, so the story goes. But since that day, he's been rather lacking. And the truth about what really went down that fateful day is coming up later. And M wangles her way into an important bodyguarding mission. And definitely not just an excuse for an alien dignitary to get sozzled, honest governor. That reminds me, really should call up me friends, sink a few pints, catch up on the outside world. Ah, you don't want to hear all of that. Onward! But the party takes a turn when Prince Vungus is assassinated. These shape-shifting assassins are presumed to be the Hive, a parasitic race that conquer their victims from within. In truth, however, they are of the Dyad race. But what do they really want? Stay tuned to find out. And with his dying breath, he imparts an important gift to M. And H's nose for extraterrestrial poisons leads our agents to Marrakesh. And a double cross? Agent C has been concerned at the growing incompetence of H, suspecting that he may have been compromised. And with an untested extraterrestrial object in H's hands, C takes action. But High T is playing both angles. And our heroes make their escape. Which goes pretty well. Until H hits the hyperdrive, but the empty desert is the perfect place to test the last gift of Prince Vungus. Vungus stole an experimental super-compressed sun-powered weapon from his world, hoping that it would be safe with his old friend H. But he sensed that H was compromised, and gave it to M instead. But oh dear, the weapon is stolen, and ends up in the hands of Reza Stavros, intergalactic arms dealer, merchant of death former squeeze of Agent H, who must now infiltrate the island and attempt to recover the weapon, which goes about as well as you'd expect. And doubly so for M. But the dealer's thug, in an incredible coincidence, is the same alien that sate Agent M on her life's course. Chekhov's alien, if you will. Lazy writing if you won't. But what the hell, I'm feeling generous, so I'll allow it. But there's still the little matter of these gentlemen which is deftly handled by High T. But the truth is that High T was the weak link in the London branch, and has been ever since the incident in Paris, where he and H didn't save the world with their wits and deatomizers, for High T was infected, and H was neuralized. And now, High T's taken the weapon. And it leads to a showdown in Paris, where the creature that was High T plans a great destruction. But the Great Destruction is turned on the Hive! And so, M gets her Neuralizer, H is promoted, and all is well. So that was Men in Black. International!
and despite Rotten Tomatoes, or perhaps because of them, I'm going to put this one into my house of love. So let's get right to it. I couldn't say that this was a 23% film, because to me, a 23% film is far less polished. A 23% film would be riddled with bad acting, editing mistakes, and special effects that really aren't that special. And that is not this movie. And not least because of the chemistry between supposed hero, but actual sub Bond wannabe, Chris Hemsworth, and driven, self-propelled rookie Tessa Thompson. And the stellar supporting cast, Liam Neeson, Rafe Spall, Emma Thompson, all give solid performances. And the movie flows well enough, as we follow our protagonists on a globe-trotting journey from New York to London to Marrakesh, to the den of an intergalactic weapon smuggler off the coast of Naples. But this movie's great flaw, in my own opinion at least, is that it doesn't land nearly as much as the other three did. F. Gary Gray's no Barry Sonnefeld, and Gray just doesn't have down the same kind of 1940s comedic fast-talking back and forth that was the signature of the J and K trilogy, and while Will Smith was no Chris Hemsworth, Hemsworth is no Will Smith. His is not a face of pain and exertion, more pin-up smiles or action hero grimaces, with little if anything in between. But again, this movie is believably acted, professionally shot, edited and composited, and scored by Danny Elfman, alongside Chris Bacon. And the leads are likeable, and the central mystery is somewhat compelling. All in all, I don't hate this movie. It's certainly uneven, and there are parts that I would have done differently, but I'd certainly watch this movie again. It may not be the equal of the era-defining first movie, but I think that Men in Black International is a good solid action comedy, and that's enough for me. And with these words, this is Agent FM wishing you a bientôt, matane, and splendid ver thrig, folks. Hey folks, Funky again. If you liked the video, you know where that button is. Or why not consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell? And if you want to be extra awesome, you can check out my crowdfunding links. Funding me grants access to the VIP channel in my Discord server, but there's still plenty of fun in general. And if you're not fussed about any of it, that's okay too. So long!